Su Tong, welcome to CCTV News. We are now sitting in the Beijing Normal University International Writing Center. This is supposed to be China's equivalent, as you know, of the Iowa University inside the United States, its international writings program. But help us to understand, you are belonging to the Chinese writers, so-called avant-garde generation. Are you guys still avant-garde anymore? Are you still creative after all of these years? Many of our generation of pioneer writers have got old and are forced to begin to recall the past, which is inevitable. The writing of our youth was vigorous and hearty and inadvertently became a representative of the avant-garde literature trend. After decades of writing, a lot of people say that the pioneer of the year is no longer a pioneer. Whether you're a pioneer is not important, continuing to write is more important. Embarking upon a political venture, everyone had different tricks, but most focused on appearance and attitude. A more extreme example is streaking with words and sentences. Young writers have the attitude of youth, but the writer can't write for attitude alone. We must constantly perform self-examination in order to continue writing. The writer's career is not long, so it's impossible to write a novel every day, sometimes once every three or four years, even five or six years. We don't say this kind of writing is a craftsman writing and that it's brave or safe. What we're concerned about is how to maintain a relatively exuberant productivity in literature. Help us to understand at this moment what really motivated you to write and what about now? Has that changed? You had already a very early stage fame in your writing career. What is its impact on you now? My motivation is that I may write a great novel, which also means I am dissatisfied with my past works and that I don't think they meet the standard of great in my mind. My motivation is the desire or even the pipe dream for great work. This is a great temptation, which I am grateful for. Dream of Red Mansions, War and Peace, Madame Bovary, The Brothers Karmazov, Kafka are great in literary history, and the standard is in everyone's heart. I am grateful for my becoming famous at an early age. One of the benefits it brought me was that it helped me build up the confidence to write. Another benefit was a sense of realism. Many young writers were down and out with few guarantees in life. It's difficult to persist in writing under those circumstances. My becoming famous kept my mind on writing. But the applause at an early age brought up potential problems, which was that I thought I might become too proud of myself. The pride would be reflected in my work in a way of protecting my image and brought me restrictions, probably self-constraint. Narcissism and self-confidence are double-edged. It's hard to describe the subtle differences between them. And writing is inseparable from them. However, the consequence of overconfident narcissism is the need for vigilance. Just like some girls think of themselves as the most beautiful in the world. If I think of my work as the best in the world, what should I do then? How should I improve my novels in the future? Mr. Su, you have won a lot of international literature prizes and also contributing your part to the overall global discussion about Chinese contemporary literature. I'm sure when you go outside China, people go to you and say, is that what you write, Mr. Su, in your novels, the real China? How do you respond to them? I don't have any influence in the world. Although there are many translations of my books, they're all put on the dusty shelf of foreign literature. My readers are domestic. More overseas readers are surely good, but I don't think I have the ability to affect them. As for whether I'm writing the real China, I don't think it's important whether it's real or fake, for I'm writing the China that is in my eyes. Over the years, you have also been participating in a lot of international discussion about literature. Uh, many of your counterparts from overseas would say those are dialogue exchanges. But what would you say? Is that your obligation to explain about China? I've never stopped answering similar questions all my life, hundreds of times. I'm not tired of it because it's never the same person. This shows how people look at the creation, how they treat the writer. These repeated questions test whether I can think more in depth and elaborate better on the same issue. Among the international writers, Mr. Su, 
who have been of inspirations to you? There must be some influence. There are a large number of cultural influences in this day and age. We not only read Chinese literature, such as The Romance of West Chamber, The Dream of Red Mansion, Lu Xun, Chen Songwen, and Jiang Ailing, but we also read numerous excellent examples of Western literature. The influence of all are at the intersection. I think it's not necessary to sort out which parts of literary influence comes from where. When I was young, Salinger was the greatest object of my obsession. Nine Stories is a top ten best novel in my heart. The two remaining also, of course, are the greatest writers in my heart. I cannot analyze their influence on me concretely, but I am grateful for all my contact with literature. They are all my nutrition. Spiritual influence started from the effects of the words or even the sentences, of course. The opening sentence of 100 Years of Solitude has been used by a lot of people, and now even becomes ironic. We can see that the text is not only about the topic of literary history, it increasingly becomes an influence which is hard to describe and becomes your habit. Foreign readers are sometimes interested in my novels. I think both of Chinese stories or stories across cultures, no matter what nationality, as long as the stories are well written, they will be appealing. No matter what nationality they are, what language they speak, what color their skin is, people needn't be stressed that they don't understand the 60s and 70s in China. People must understand people. When you write people and society, no matter what society they're in, the author has enough imagination and can understand what you write. The only thing that matters is to write well. I'm not opposed to the hunt for novelty. The demand of every reader is different. Some people like suspense novels, some like the serious novels. That is the demand of readers. Reading is a variety of reading. Demand is different, and also acquisition is different. Many of your international counterparts would uh, say that the kind of exchanges you are having is certain kinds of dialogue. How have you been benefiting from these kind of dialogues? It is difficult to have a conversation with foreign writers because Chinese is difficult to translate. Many writers in China can hardly speak English. I'm one of them. The real dialogue happens in reading. It's hard to talk directly with them because of the translation, but real conversation goes on through mutual reading. Mr. Su, in many of your works, there are quite a number of very influential female characters. They have been portrayed in various kinds of uh, movies, uh, TV series. But are they always victims as women are being portrayed in Chinese literature works? Can they be winners? What is your view? My motive is in fact to break the rule of women always being portrayed as victims. In the 90s, four or five novelettes of mine had female protagonists, which is not exactly a lot, but they were later made into movies and had greater influence ending up making me into a representative of Chinese male writers, which is hardly the case. The reason I write female characters to be like this is out of a simple wish to free them from the stereotype of being purely victims. Genders aside, the bottom line is they are humans, and they share the same nature as men. Of course, I don't flatter myself that I can speak for women, or my opinions are completely right. I just want to avoid the ways previous writers portray women. These works are neither pioneers nor rebellions. But I am rebellious from my very motives of creation. I refuse to have women's being whiny or weepy when suffering. I refuse to have them chained up. I want to create another kind of story, where women are seen as individuals in whole, having both dark and bright sides when playing a role in society. I want to show their warmth, their coldness, their love, and their hatred. Lust, goodness, badness, they are all human nature, both men and women should bear. Some say I paint a very dark and cold picture of human nature. And when they see female characters like this, it becomes a particularly big deal. I guess I can only say, I write simply what's in my head. Mr. Su, I'm always curious, we are living in such a rapidly changing China. As a writer yourself, do you have the time and the patience to understand, to figure out the logic behind all of these changes? and be able to record them, absorb them, write them down. 
。那个首先，因为我从来不觉得一个作家，呃，应该过高的。I don't believe writers should overestimate their power in society. I especially like what Kierkegaard has said: "Never can a writer lead an era; instead, he can only point out the dissatisfactions of the times." I agree with him, and this is what writers should do for society. I don't want to put too much burden and responsibilities on myself. I'm doing nothing but discovering and contemplating the discontentment of the era, which is the core and the theme of my novels. To you, is speed important? I hope the pace of the whole society can be a little bit slower. I think the functions of cell phones are too complex and unnecessary. Though I don't advocate returning to agricultural society, which is unreasonable, I do believe it's useless for society to develop too fast. I hope it can develop slower. It is important to me to write slowly. While consolidating messages, I will do subtraction. I will choose among all the social concerns. This is how I slow down when I'm writing. Mr. Su, you have joined the Beijing Normal University International Writing Center, which means you are interacting, can be every day, with the younger generation of Chinese who are interested in literature. How has that experience like for you? It is quite interesting to teach here. When I was smoking after the meeting, a freshman came by and was eager to have a word with me, but he was too shy to speak. To comfort him, I looked at him friendly. He finally came to me. I asked, "Are you a graduate?" "No," he said. "I'm a freshman." He talked to me because he wanted to tell me he liked Hong Tao Q, a novel of mine. He was wondering which part happened in real life. So I told him which part was mere illusion and what part was based on life. I enjoy sharing my ideas with the students. Maybe the work we discussed is not famous, but the fact he likes it matters. The discussion is amazing. We are almost the same. I might behave exactly like him if I met my favorite writer in my twenties. Honestly, I had a golden age of writing in my youth, full of opportunities, and a normal passage may be appreciated by numerous readers. Times have changed. Today, even running around naked can't attract people's attention. This is reality. I don't know how much I can help them, but I hope I am helpful. Well, with that, we guess we're running out of time for our discussion with you about your works. But for now, thank you so much, Mr. Su. All the best. 好了。